The PSP Old Timer ships in two versions, the Legacy Old Timer and Old Timer Master Edition. Both are vintage style compressors with tubal valve emulation that can also be turned off for a more transparent type of processing. They have similar interfaces, but are different enough to justify a separate look at them both. Let's look at the old timer version first. This version has simpler controls with less advanced features than those found on the mastering edition, and is designed for track or bus compression and limiting. The controls are relatively straightforward. At the bottom, and common to both, are controls for managing banks, presets and AB comparisons. Click on the red arrow to save the relevant type and the green arrow to load. Click in the name field to rename presets and the icon next to it to show the presets available in the current bank. Top right is the valve clear off switch. In the valve position the valve emulation is switched on. Clear turns it off for a more transparent type of compression. Off bypasses the compressor completely. The valve screw control sets the reference level for the valve. Increasing this control increases the amount of valve warmth added by the compressor. We'll hear both of those in use shortly. To the left is the ratio control, ranging from 1.2 to 1 through to 10 to 1. The knee characteristics of the 1.2 and 1.5 setting are easy over. This means the compression starts at very low levels and increases more and more as levels increase, resulting in a smooth gain reduction spread. The higher settings are a more conventional soft knee type. The time control sets the overall speed of the attack and release phases. The ratio between attack and release times is preset at 10 to 1, but this ratio can be adjusted with the attack ratio screw just above the time control. Time control settings of 0 to 3 work well on drums, mid-range values of 4 to 7 for general purpose compression, and 8 to 10 for levelling purposes. The compression control increases the amount of compression applied by reducing the threshold as the compression value increases. The maximum amount of compression available is governed by this control in conjunction with the ratio setting and ranges from about 8 decibels through to 30 decibels. Output is used to make up any gain lost during the compression process and the amount of gain reduction taking place is indicated by the meter in the centre of the display. Let's have a listen to it in use. First on a drum track. I'll start playback and dial in some settings to demonstrate the valve colour switch in use. I'll set a relatively high ratio and fast attack and release times, and then adjust the compression to taste. Notice that the sound is much more transparent when I switch the valve circuitry out. It's especially noticeable on the snare. Increasing the valve level colours the sound even more and that becomes even more noticeable with the valve level backed right off or turned off completely. Here it is on a couple of clean guitar tracks, first in isolation and then in the context of a mix. On these tracks I'm using longer release and attack times as well as lower compression ratios.
Now let's have a look at the Master Edition, which as the name suggests has features that are more suited towards mastering and master bus uses. The first thing you'll notice is that there are more controls available on this version, several of which serve the same function as is on the Legacy version. We'll only look at the additional controls here. Beside the mode switch and valve level control is a cutoff frequency control for the sidechain input. To the left of that is a channel processing selector switch. Choose from the stereo channels, separate left or right channels, or separate mid and side channels. To process the mid side and left right channels separately, two instances of the plugin in series are required. We'll look at that in more detail shortly when I set up the mid side processing. To the left of the gain reduction meter, there are separate controls for attack and release. These replace the time control found in the legacy version and allow for greater control over the attack and release times. There is also a switch to turn on automatic program dependent times. The makeup control makes up for any level lost caused by game reduction, similar to the output control on the legacy version. Notice in this edition that direct parameter entry is possible by clicking on the parameter display beneath the control. Finally, there are independent controls for wet and dry levels. This makes setting up parallel compression very easy. Click on the name label above the controls to mute or unmute the signals as required. Now let's take a look at how to use this for parallel compression on a drum track. Here I'm going to set up Old Timer ME to really squash the drums with some quite severe compression. Then I'm going to introduce the dry sound and adjust both the wet and dry level controls to produce a nice fat drum sound while still maintaining some of the original dynamics. You'll hear how much snappier the drums sound with the plug-in turned on. To process mid and side channels separately, I have two instances of Old Timer ME in series on this stereo mix track. I'm going to use two of the presets as starting points. One has its channel mode switched to mid, the other set to side. The mid and side channels are now being processed separately using their relative plugin. I can use this to compress the mid material more than the side material, allowing me to tighten up the low end without detracting from the stereo width of the side channel. You can distinctly hear the effect of each processor on its relevant channel. Notice that the mid channel seems to recede into the mix when I turn the processor off. Down, 
repeating that on the side channel and the track loses much of its stereo appearance. That's the old-timer vintage compressors, both the Legacy and Master Editions.